what is a bracing system? A bridge's bracing system is a subsidiary but crucial component. A bracing system helps to stabilize main girders during the construction time, distribute load effects, and limit compression flanges that could otherwise buckle laterally. What is the function of the bracing system? Bracing that runs vertically. Vertical bracing between column lines provides load pathways that convey horizontal forces to the ground level while also providing lateral stability. Bracing on the horizontal plane. At each floor level, horizontal bracing, usually provided by floor plate action, provides a load path for horizontal forces, mostly from the perimeter columns owing to wind to be transferred to the vertical bracing planes. What are the types of bracing systems? Sway bracing. Sway braces are used to regulate vibration, absorb shock loads, guide or constrain pipe movement caused by thermal expansion, and brace a pipeline against sway. In both stress and compression modes, they contain springs that provide a restraining force. Bracings are particularly important in steel structures to resist lateral forces and increase the rigidity of the steel frame. The structure will become uncertain as a result of bracing. However, it stiffens the structure and aids in its resistance to sway. Steel bracing. The basic structural members of a typical RCC, reinforced cement concrete, construction are the beam column and slab, which are also the main structural components of a steel structure. Steel is utilized in conjunction with concrete in RCC structures, making them heavier than steel structures. Sections in RCC structures will be heavier than steel structures for a given load situation. When a conventional single bay frame is subjected to lateral load, it sways. The sway increases as the structure's height rise. Bracing is offered to reduce sway. Unbraced frames are those without bracings, while braced frames are those with bracings. The structure is stiffened via bracing. Only axial load is carried by bracing, which might be compression or tension. The static internal indeterminacy on the other hand, grows as the kinematic indeterminacy diminishes. Beam bracing. A lean-on system braces a beam or column that relies on nearby structural elements for support. Lean-on systems are made up of structural members that are coupled or linked together in such a way that buckling one part requires nearby others to buckle with the same lateral displacement. Vertical bracing. Bracing is provided between column lines in the vertical planes, which provides load channels for transferring horizontal forces to the ground level. This system is designed to distribute horizontal loads to the footings while still withstanding the structure's overall sway. How does diagonal bracing work? The structure of the building is made of steel. The building's plane layout is built with three cores, 32 frame columns, eight on each side of the exterior cube, and a six-meter spacing between columns. The internal tube is made up of 20 columns and is joined to the outside tube by steel beams with a distance of 14.6 meters between them. Cantilever trusses are also installed at the top of the structure. Steel concrete composite slabs are used for the floor slabs. Cross bracing is a mechanism used in construction to reinforce building structures where diagonal supports overlap. The most common form of cross bracing is an X-shaped arrangement of two diagonal supports. One brace will be tensed while the other is compressed when subjected to lateral stress such as wind or seismic activity. Steel cables can be utilized in steel construction because of their high tension resistance, although they cannot take any load in compression. Bridge side supports and structural foundations are two common applications for cross bracing. This construction style maximizes the weight of the load that a structure can support. The cross beam joining arches is also a sort of cross brace used to enhance strength in the building of mining tunnels. They're frequently tubular, having clips or perforations for screw fastening on the ends. They act as a stiffening element for a design stability. This brace could either be a board or a regular cross-section timber cross beam. Cross bracing can be seen in settings like flooring, where cross braces are used to prevent movement between floor joists. How does roof bracing work? At the rafter level longitudinal and diagonal bracing should be offered, this may be excluded where rigid panels are used e.g. plywood or chipboard that are fixed to each trust rafter with galvanized round wire nails. Small gaps, like two trust rafters between bracing, are permissible in the midst of a fully braced roof. Longitudinal bracing must run along the length of the roof and the party walls. It should authorize diagonal bracing to flow through it. 
Each roof shall have at least four diagonal bracings when the braces cross in thin fronted or mono pitch roofs, the junction. When the span is greater than 8 meters. Bracing should be developed for mono pitch roofs and duo pitch roofs for 11 meter span, or more. It should be roughly 45 degrees for the web members. Two diagonal members create a V-shaped stretch downwards from the top corners of the horizontal members and meet at the lower horizontal members at the center point. Both approaches can drastically reduce the compression brace's buckling capacity down below the tension yield capability of the brace. This means that once the braces have reached their resistance capability, the load must be challenged in the horizontal members bending. I hope this video provides you with an in-depth knowledge of the bracing system and structure. Please feel free to like, share, and comment.